Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on my channel. The topic of today's video is a topic that I've known about for quite a while, but I never considered talking about on my channel until one of you guys suggested it. And so I'm really, really looking forward to telling you guys about this topic and talking about it. And I really hope that you guys enjoy it. So with that all being said, let's get right into today's video. So the topic that we are going to be discussing today is that of shadow people. And I do want to give you guys some encounters of people who have had encounters with shadow people. But before I do that, I kind of want to give you guys a little bit of what exactly shadow people are essentially. So before really diving into this topic, I do want to say that shadow people are not to be confused with men in black. Men in black is a topic that I have talked about on my channel before. And I figure a lot of you will know the difference. However, while doing research on this topic, I was going through a lot of articles and whatnot and finding that a lot of people think that the men in black and shadow people are the same thing, which they are not. Honestly, these creatures or these beings are exactly what they sound like. They are sometimes referred to as shadow figures, shadow beings, and some people even refer to them as black mass. These beings, when seen, usually represent that of a humanoid figure, and in my research I found that they are more often seen looking like men rather than women. They are said to not really have too many distinctive features because they are that. They are just shadows, usually seen in the corner of your eye very, very quickly. The sighting of these beings does not usually last very long. You usually catch a glimpse of them while you're turning your head and then when you realize what you'd seen, you turn to look at it again and this being is completely gone. I'm not really sure if I'm giving a great explanation on this. Um, I always find that I can explain things in my head, but when I try to explain them in words, it doesn't usually work out. But I hope that I'm explaining this enough to kind of get across to you what exactly these beings are. These apparitions have been around for many, many years, with some people believing that these are nothing more than ghosts, other believing, obviously, that these are nothing more than your eyes playing tricks on you, and other people believe that these are some other kind of demonic entity that doesn't have anything to do with ghosts, but maybe could be related to aliens, or something that is completely unknown. Now, although these beings are usually said to just be shadows, some of them do have distinct features that make them stand out and appear a little bit different than the average shadow person or shadow people. There is five categories of shadow people as far as I know in my research, and I'm going to mention those now to kind of give you guys an idea of what the difference is between all of these different kinds of shadow people. So the first group of shadow people that I'm going to quickly mention are the positive shadow people, and these ones aren't seen as often as the other ones that I'm going to be talking about today, but usually these specific types of shadow shadow people are seen and they kind of bring on a feeling of happiness and positivity whereas many of the other ones bring on a very dark dreadful feeling these positive shadow people don't bring on that feeling at all. The second group of shadow people that I want to mention is referred to as the negative shadow people. And these shadow people are just shadows and usually they are seen and bring on a very overwhelming feeling of dread and negativity and they just aren't good and you pretty much know that as soon as you see them. The third group of shadow people, which I find to be very interesting, is a group that is considered to be seen with glowing red eyes. They have no other distinctive features on their face, no mouth, no nose, no ears, no hair, nothing like that, but they are seen with glowing red eyes. Number four, the fourth group of shadow people are called the hooded shadow people and these are the shadow people that are usually seen wearing hoods or appearing like they have on some kind of hood, although they are just a shadow and these ones just like the red eyed shadow people as well as the negative shadow people bring on a feeling of immense dread and negativity when spotted. And the fifth group of shadow people would be a shadow person who is seen wearing what appears to be a fedora or a top hat. This is one of the more popular ones on the internet. If you guys are familiar with what is referred to as, I believe, the hat man, he usually appears to people whether they are asleep or woken up in the very late hours of the night. 
sometimes in a nightmare, sometimes again when you're just really quickly woken up out of your sleep and you're looking around the room. Um, and again, very, very late at night, whether you're asleep or awake, this is a very popular one and he is referred to as the hat man and this man that people are seeing quite frequently all over the world is a shadow person. So like I briefly already said, but I do just want to mention again, is these shadow people are usually seen at nighttime, often in your very own home. Sometimes they are seen when you're waking up in the middle of the night out of a deep sleep and you're just kind of looking around your room. This is when they are often seen, but they are also often seen just walking through the rooms of your home. Usually in these specific scenarios, they are just seen really quickly and then they vanish and they're not really seen again. Maybe they're seen more oftenly, but they don't usually really linger in these specific situations. But in some situations, they will find a corner or a doorway within your home and they will linger there for an extended period of time, just again leaving you with a very bad, unsettling feeling. So before we move on any further into today's video, I do just want to quickly touch base on the positive shadow people. Now they will not be the focus of today's video, but I do just want to give you guys a little bit of a brief kind of summary and explanation as to what exactly comes along with those people. So these positive shadow people are seen in the same scenarios, although sometimes they are seen when you're walking down the street, in your home, pretty much anywhere, just like the rest of the shadow people. And when you see them, they obviously in some situations do freak you out because they're shadows and they're not really coming from anything, which is usually how a shadow is created. But they usually come along with some kind of feeling of positivity and in most situations they just walk by really quickly. They kind of keep to themselves minding their own business and then just as quickly as they appeared they vanish without any other negative inclination. What makes this topic so particularly interesting is these beings, whether they are the positive kind or one of the other four types of shadow people that are seen, they are seen so, so, so often. They are not specific or native to one specific area. They are seen all over the world by all different ranges of people. There is not one specific kind of people who see them. They are seen everywhere by many, many people who don't fall into any specific category. And I'm sure some of you at home are sitting there thinking, how weird this is because maybe you yourself have experienced something like this or you yourself have seen a shadow person because they are just seen that frequently. But like everything paranormal, whether this is paranormal or not, there are skeptics who try to explain this away by something much more simple. The main thing that people try to explain this away as is sleep paralysis. Now, sleep paralysis is absolutely terrifying. I experience sleep paralysis quite often. Um, if you guys want a video about that, let me know in the comments down below whether you want to see my own sleep paralysis stories or just see me talk about sleep paralysis in general. I do think that that topic is quite, quite interesting. But yeah, many people try to chalk these shadow people up to sleep paralysis. Many people like to chalk it up to your eyes just simply playing tricks on you. Some people like to say, you know, it's a lack of sleep and you were feeling emotionally vulnerable and that is why you saw a shadow person. Some people chalk it up to maybe your mental state just isn't great. There are all kinds of explanations that these skeptics like to use to kind of explain away the fact that this phenomena is something that happens all of the time to many people and it can't just that simply be explained away in my personal opinion. We're at the part of today's video where I want to share with you guys some people's first-hand encounters with shadow people. But before I do that, I just need to say none of these stories are mine. These are stories that I just simply found online, put together to put into today's video for entertainment purposes. And so with that all being said, let's get right into some of these stories. So when I first found this very first story that I'm going to be sharing with you guys, it appears that this story is told by the young girl's mother. So this girl and her family had moved into a new house and this young girl was about four or five years old at this time. Around this time, she started to tell her mom that she was absolutely terrified of the basement. 
And obviously, being a parent, her mother tried to figure out why this was and kind of get rid of her daughter's fears. But her daughter always said that there were strange noises coming from the basement and that the dark man lived down there. However, the young girl wasn't too worried about this because she had an invisible friend that her mother could not see named Bradley who lived upstairs with her in the upper part of the home and he kept the dark man away and kind of protected the little girl. Several years later, the girl is now 15 years old and they are still living in that exact same home. This girl has one of her friends over and they are sitting on the couch, I guess watching TV, just hanging out as teenage girls do, when all of a sudden they looked up and saw the shadow of what appeared to be a full grown human man standing at the entrance of the living room. But once the girls noticed this, it appeared that the shadow shot straight towards them and then down the basement stairs. Now obviously both girls were absolutely terrified, but the mother of this 15 year old girl said that this girl has experienced paranormal and strange things her entire life. So yes, she did think this was absolutely terrifying and she was quite scared. It wasn't anything that shook her up too much, but that specific friend who was at the home that day never came over again because she was so frightened by this incident. In this next story, a man and his wife were living in a fairly new double wide mobile home. The place where this home was located had never had a actual house built on the grounds and because of this the narrator states that he thought that this eliminated the area for haunting. But despite his beliefs, even though he didn't think the area could be haunted, him and his wife experienced a lot of strange things while living in that area. And today I'm going to be sharing with you one of those strange things. So on this particular night, the couple had just gotten into bed and the husband could not sleep. He was having a very hard time sleeping that night. And they say that it is very important to note here that they always kept the bathroom light on, which was furthest from the bedroom, but it did leave a kind of glow into the bedroom so you could see your surroundings. And this was nothing out of the ordinary. They did always leave this bathroom light on. While this man was laying in his bed trying to go to sleep, that is when he became overwhelmingly aware of a third presence in the room. He opened his eyes at this point and that is when he saw a shadowy figure moving parallel to the foot of the bed before positioning itself at the very foot corner of the bed. Obviously, this man was shocked at what he was seeing, but he said that he could also tell that this presence that was standing at the foot of his bed was also aware of him and his wife sleeping in the bed. He said that whatever this was appeared to be a kind of like thick smoke or a shadow, but it seemed to be more material than that, but less material than an actual human. The man sharing this story says that although he knew that he should have been scared, the strangest thing about this entire situation is that he didn't feel any kind of fear while looking at this being. At this point while weighing in the bed, he became aware that his wife had now woken up and the two shared very quiet whispers just confirming that they were both looking at the same thing and confirming to him that his eyes were not playing tricks on him and there was actually something standing at the foot of his bed. The two of them watched this shadowy figure at the foot of the bed for around 10 minutes before it slowly started to vanish and once it was gone, there was no sign that it had ever been there. But again, both husband and wife had witnessed this shadowy figure that was standing at the foot of the bed and because of this, it kind of confirmed to them that this actually did happen. Now we are moving on to story number three. So in this specific story, the narrator starts off by saying that he is not one to exaggerate a story that isn't as extreme or make it sound more extreme than it actually was. And he definitely isn't one to kind of share an unbelievable story with somebody and make it sound more unbelievable than it actually is. But he said that what happened to him and his family was just so out of this world that it is going to sound like that is exactly what he did. Although he completely claims that this story is 100% true and he never fabricated anything. This small family had moved into this new home in October of 2001 and for the first two to three months, 
that was overall pretty good. There was nothing alarming about the house, but after living there for two to three months, they started to be woken up every single night by their three-year-old daughter coming into the room claiming that there was a monster in her bedroom. Now, obviously, because it is very normal for children to have nightmares and for their mind to play tricks on them, and for them to get scared of things that aren't actually there, the parents quickly explained this away as her having night terrors or seeing something that wasn't actually there. By the 1st of February, the young girl stopped waking up in the middle of the night and no longer ran into her parents' room to wake them up. However, the narrator of this story started to wake up almost every single night in the middle of the night anyways because he could feel somebody staring at him. He claimed that when he looked around the room to try and find what was staring at him, he saw a shadowy figure that would appear to him for a few seconds and then completely vanish. This started to happen to him two or three times a week for months. The narrator would wake up again feeling nervous or as if someone was watching him. He would look around the room, notice this apparition. He said that he would either try to focus on it or he would try to ignore it and turn on the TV and then it would very quickly vanish. And again, this started to happen to him two or three times a week for months. His fiance did see it alone on one occasion. She must have been awake and at this time he was asleep, but she had woken him up in the very late hours of the night to tell him that she had seen a faceless child standing on her side of the bed. She woke him up and told this and he assumed that it was their young daughter. And so he got up and went into her room, but when he went to check on their daughter, she was completely fast asleep. He goes on to share what he says was the scariest experience that he had ever had with this being. He woke up in the middle of the night, which now became a regular occurrence, and saw this being in the corner of the room. However, this time the being was not fading. It was just staying there, floating in the corner of the room. He said that whatever this was appeared to be some kind of shadowy or smoky figure, and it appeared to be mostly black, but it did have some gray in it. He said that it appeared to be at four to five feet long and one and a half feet in width. He said that while he was looking at this thing, he had never experienced that kind of fear ever in his life. And this was one of the scariest moments of anything that had ever happened to him up until this point. He said while looking at this being, he was struck with so much fear that he couldn't move. He felt like he was completely paralyzed but he managed to wiggle around enough to kind of hit his fiance a little bit, and she woke up and saw this being or this shadowy figure, but she'd only seen it for a brief second before it completely vanished. They said that there was just overall a very not good feeling in that home after they had lived there for a while, and so because of that, they moved out in late September, and they have never had an experience like this ever since. There are several books talking about this specific topic, and there is actually a movie that I watched and I believe it was released in 2013 called Shadow People which is a very very good movie if you are interested in this topic at all. I do think that that is a great movie to watch um, but I do plan on making a follow-up video to this one because I feel like there are so many Shadow People encounters and you can kind of tear them apart bit by bit. We could talk about the shadow people with the glowing red eyes, we could talk about the, you know, the hooded one, the one with the fedora and the hat, the hat man. Um, there are so many different kinds of shadow people that I could make several different videos on this specific topic, which I do plan to do in the future. But guys, that brings us to the end of this video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below what you'd like to see in my future videos. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.